Congratulations on making it to the final video of Calculus 1. This is section 5.8, Inverse Trig Functions Integration. We just finished reviewing how to find the derivative of inverse trig functions, and these were the same six functions that I showed you um, in the last video. Now, we made sure to point out that if you knew the derivative of arc sine, all you had to do was find the negative value for arc cosine and similar for tangent and cotangent, arc secant and arc cosecant. So for that reason, when we are integrating, we're only going to worry about three pair. We're only going to worry about arc sine, arc tangent, and arc secant. So we're really just looking at these three. And I just want you to recall that integrating is the inverse of differentiating. So notice the um, relationship here, u prime over the square root of one minus u squared. If I'm integrating that form, I'm getting back to arc sine. So the only difference here is if there's an a, that a value obviously would need to be taken into account. And so that's what they've done there with the integration. So there are three of these. Again, if you ended up with say a negative du, that's just going to give you a negative arc sine. So let's take a look at how we can use these. We're going to take a look at these first three practice together. And I'm, as we're working through them, I'm going to point out all of the things that you need to be watching for. So I'm going to really take my time with these first three. The first thing that you have to look out for is obviously to choose the correct inverse trig function. So here I have a square root function and I don't have any other function on the outside of that. And therefore it must be this arc sine function. Oops, I was going to leave that boxed off in yellow. For the middle function, this is the only one that doesn't have a square root. That has to be arc tangent. And for the last one, this is the square root, but it's also got that extra function on the outside. And so that has to be arc secant. So obviously the first thing is to choose the correct function. The second thing is to make sure that you have the correct value of a and u. A is always, always, always going to be the square root of a constant function. So most of the time it's pretty straightforward, but particularly when you have a plus down here, um, they like to switch these back and forth, and it's important to know which one's A and which one's U. So A is always going to be the square root of the constant function. So in this case, A is the square root of 4, which is 2, and U is the square root of X squared, which is X. Now, some students say, well, why would I take my time to write the square root? And you don't have to, but what I find often is when students get to this question, they then say A must be 2, even if they get the U right as 3X, which obviously U is correct, but A is actually the square root of 2, and so that's why I encourage you to write the square root of 9X squared, which is 3X, to remind you that it's always the square root. For our last function, our blue function, a would be the square root of 9, which is 3. u would be the square root of 4x squared, which is 2x. So now let's go ahead and get started. For our first question, we already know we're writing arc sine u divided by a plus c. The question is, is this OK exactly as it is, or do I need to make it fit the pattern? Well. The last thing that we need to do is just to find du. So du in this case is the derivative of x, which is just 1 dx. So I can see that dx is the same as du, that yes, 4 is the same as a squared, and x squared is the same as u squared. So everything is exactly as it should be, which means I don't have to do any additional work. I'm just going to go straight to my solution, arc sine of u, which is x, divided by a, which is 2, plus c. So all I'm looking for in terms of work is, did you identify a and u and du? For my second question, I have a is radical 2, u is 3x. Now this one, du, is the derivative of 3x, which is 3dx. 
So keep in mind, this is the third thing to look out for, is anything that we have learned up to this point about integration, we can still use. So this doesn't quite fit the pattern. I need a three DX, but I can't just randomly add a three. If I add a three in the numerator, I have to divide by three outside the integral. So my solution is going to be one third and then all of this because I'm essentially integrating one third times the integral of all of this. So I get one third and then one divided by a, so one divided by radical two and then arc tangent u, which is three x divided by a, which is radical two plus c. And I'm going to leave it as one divided by three radical two arc tangent 3x divided by radical 2 plus c. So you might be saying, hold up, I know that we don't like radicals in the denominators, um, but when we're writing these, that happens so often, we actually can just leave them right where they are. It actually helps us to determine what the original function was. Last function, I've already determined a and u, so let's look at du, pardon my color switch, Let's look at du, which is the derivative of 2x, which is 2dx. So does this fit the pattern? I need du. Well, I'm going to need a 2 here, 2dx. I need u on the outside. Well, u is 2x. I don't have a 2 there, so I need to add a 2. Now, is it OK that I did that? Well, yes. Normally, if I took a 2 here, I would have to take a 1 half on the outside. And if I put a two in the denominator, I would have to multiply by two on the outside, but those all canceled each other out. So I can have the two in the numerator and the two in the denominator, and it doesn't change anything. And now I can find the solution. So I have one divided by a, and then arc secant radical u, so radical two x, I'm sorry, not radical, absolute value of u, and then a is three plus c. So really this is all about making sure the pattern fits. This one's really easy to miss, so please make sure if you're using arc secant, you ensure that u is on the outside of the radical in the denominator. Here are two questions for you to try on your own. So try them both. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. For my first question, again, I'm dealing with a square root function and it has this extra thing on the outside, so an extra function. So it's likely going to be arc secant. Sometimes you'll find halfway through that you have to switch, um, but let's go ahead and move forward as though it's arc secant. A would be the square root of 16, which is four. U would be the square root of two X squared, which unfortunately is X radical two. And DU would be the derivative of X radical two, which is just radical two DX. From here, what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure it fits the pattern. So fitting the pattern means I have du. Well, I don't. I have, I'm going to need a radical 2 up here to have radical 2 dx. I need u. Well, this is x, and I need x radical 2, so I'm going to need a radical 2 in the denominator. And then, of course, we know this part fits because that's where we came up with a and u. So now does it fit? Yes. And I don't have to worry about anything on the outside because I have have a negative, I mean a radical two in the numerator and in the denominator, which is the equivalent of one. So I can leave it just like this and go straight to my solution, which is one divided by a, which in this case is four, arc secant radical u, which is x, I keep saying radical, I'm so sorry, absolute value of x radical two divided by a, which is four, and then plus c. So this is my final solution. Let's look at the second example. The second example appears to be arc sine. So let's move forward and see if that's the case. a would be the square root of two because it's always the square root of the constant, u would be the square root of e to the 2x, which is e to the x, and du would be the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x dx. 
Now, do I have everything I need? Is it going to fit this pattern? Well, do I have du? No, I would have to take e to the x dx. Can I put 1 over e to the x outside the integral? No, because I'm integrating um, with respect to x. So if I keep that x on the outside, it's going to get all screwed up. It has to be integrated as well. So in order to counterbalance that, I need e to the x on the inside. Well, now all of a sudden, I'm not using arc sine. I'm using arc secant because now I have du, which is e, x, e to the x dx, and I have u, which is e to the x on the outside. So this solution is going to be 1 divided by a, arc secant, and then absolute value of u. Now, do I need to keep the absolute value on e to the x? No, that's always positive. So if you want to get rid of it, you can. a is radical 2, and then plus c. We're going to end this with two challenging questions. So I'm going to show you two strategies that you can use when you've tried everything else. Um, don't beat your head against the wall. There is hope for us all. So in this first question, we can see that the denominator seems to fit the arc secant pattern. But the problem is, if I were to then use u as x, then du would be dx. And that's not going to help me with the denominator. I mean, sorry, the numerator. Uh, and so we can't do it that way. It's not going to work. So it doesn't fit the pattern for arc sine. So what's the strategy? Well, my numerator has two values, two terms. So I'm just going to break it into two different integrals. 2x divided by the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And then plus, and I'm going to write this in a different color just so we can look at each separately. So plus 4 divided by the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. Now looking at these two, it seems that the one that I've written in yellow actually is going to work with arc sine because I would let a be the square root of 4, which is 2, u would be the square root of x squared, which is x, and du would be the derivative of x, which is 1 dx. So to fit the pattern, all I need to do is pop the 4 on the outside instead. That's easy. So now this side, oops, I'm not going to use an equal sign because I still have to deal with the blue. So this side now fits the pattern exactly, and my integral is 4, and then arc sine of u divided by a, so x divided by 2, plus c. But what happened on the blue side? Well, on the blue side, I can't use arc sine because, again, just like the original function, it's not going to take care of my 2x for me. So instead, I'm going to think back to how did I integrate before I knew these inverse trig functions. I'm going to let u be 4 minus x squared, except I've already used u over here. So just pick a different letter. v is going to be 4 minus x squared. So dv is the derivative of 4 minus x squared, which is negative 2x dx. So now what do I have? Well, I've got a negative 2x dx. So put a negative on the outside. And so really what I have is I'm integrating the, I have the negative integral of, and then this is 4 minus x squared to the, so that's v, to the negative 1 half dv. And then I have, of course, plus all of this stuff that I've already figured out. Well, if I integrate this, I'm going to get 2v to the 1 half. So really I have negative, because I had a negative out front, negative 2v to the positive 1 half. And I would have a plus c, but I've already taken my plus c over here. So I have plus 4 arc sine of x divided by 2 plus c. And then I'm just simply going to replace the v with 4 minus x squared to the 1 half, and then plus 4 arc sine x divided by 2 plus c. So that's my final answer. 
Now for my second question, you might be saying, why is that in this video? Because it clearly doesn't meet any of our patterns. It doesn't have a square root and it's kind of, it could be close to this one, but this is a constant squared and a function squared and I don't have that. So that brings us to something that you hopefully learned back in algebra two in high school or college algebra in college. And that is called completing the square. Now, if you need more practice, feel free to look up other videos on completing the square. I'm sure I have at least one um, or look at other YouTubers or instructors at your university. So for completing the square, I'm going to be looking at the denominator. I'm going to say, so this is all work separate from integrating. I'm going to say x squared minus 6x plus blank. And then plus 10 and then minus blank. So what I want to do is I want to create a function that is equal to this function. But I need those blanks to be the same number. And to find the blank, and again, this is when a is one. So when a is not one, it gets more complicated. And therefore I would suggest watch a completing the square video, but this is just the basic review. I'm going to take the B value divided by two and I'm going to square it. So the B value is this middle value, the one with the X. So in this case, negative six divided by two squared is negative three squared, which is positive nine. I'm going to add nine here. I'm going to subtract nine here. Now, why is that helpful to me? Because when we complete the square, that means the first three terms are now going to be a perfect square. I can rewrite X squared minus six X plus nine as the quantity of X minus three quantity squared. And then whatever's left over plus nine minus plus 10 minus nine gives me plus one. So all of that to say that I can now take this integral and rewrite it as the integral of dx divided by x minus three quantity squared plus one. Or if you wanna make sure it's in the correct order, I can put the plus one first. So one plus this, um, x minus three quantity squared dx I already have. So now that tells me that a is the square root of one, which is one, and u is the square root of x minus three squared, which is x minus three. du would just be dx. And now this does, just the way it's written, fit our pattern. So I can write that as one divided by a. So one divided by one is one. So I'm just not even gonna write it. And then arc tangent of u divided by a, so u is x minus three divided by one, so I don't need to worry about the divided by one, plus c. So this is my final solution for that question. Congratulations to you. That is the last video for calculus one, which is chapters one through five of our Larson text. Um, if you are ready to move on to calculus two, I have a calculus two playlist that covers chapters six through 10.